Good morning and welcome to our latest live webinar, how NVMe is revolutionizing storage. And we're taking a look at um, uh, SSDs, SATA and uh, NVMe. But first of all, thank you so much for joining. My name is Elliot Jones and I am joined here by uh, Tony Col Hollingsby, who is the SSD business manager for EMEA, as well as uh, uh, Bala Siv Palan. Um, he is uh, a key part of our uh, TRG here, uh, TRG team here at, uh, at Kingston. So before we get uh, started, um, I just wanted to let you know that we do have some assets available as well as our Q&A section, um, which is available beside the screen here. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, pop them in. We've already had a couple, so uh, we'll endeavor to get through as many as we uh, uh, feasibly can. Um, plus, we will have some um, questions throughout the, uh, the webinar just to um, uh, capture insights and uh, uh, knowledge from our um, from the community that's, uh, that's joined us today. So uh, without further ado, just wanted to give a kind of context as to um, what is NVMe and how does it differ from SATA, and then I'll hand over to um, my colleague Bala uh, just to give you a bit more uh, depth. But really, it's is to give the positioning and, and the understanding that storage protocols are evolving, and historically, um, SATA uh, and AHCI has been the go-to. Um, uh, the go-to um, protocol when it comes to uh, storage. So really we want to show how the gears are shifting in terms of, um, in terms of this protocol and what does that mean for, uh, what does that mean for storage? So, um, so if I just start off with a question. Um, so in terms of input and output operations, um, how much, Faster, do you think that um, uh, NVMe or PCIe-based drives are versus their uh, their counterparts? And I'll um, I'll offer this up as a uh, as a poll. Uh, bear with me one second. Um, so you've got a couple of options there: um, three times, six times, nine times, or twelve times. So uh, I'll give a couple of uh, a few seconds just to um, get people's inputs and. Um, uh, then we'll reveal the answer uh, a little bit later on. Um, okay, we see a lot of um, a lot of answers. Very interesting answers. Okay, it seems. 12 is the most popular, um, six is a very cl close second. I will not say anything at this point. We'll, um, uh, like I say, we'll share with you the answers uh, shortly. Okay, let me, um, let me bring that to its conclusion and I'll share with you, um, I'll share with you the, um, the answers that we, that we had. Um, so yeah, 49% said 12 times, 21% said nine times, 25% of you said six times and 4% said uh, three times. So, okay, interesting answers. So I will hand over to uh, to my colleague Bala, um, who will share with you the, um, uh, the answers and a bit more insight as to uh, how uh, NVMe uh, differs from um, uh, from uh, from SATA. Over to you, Bala. Thanks, Elliot. Yeah, we will expand on the um, IOPS, IOPS topic a bit later. Um, uh, before we continue, so this is just a quick um, look at. Um, uh, can you move? To, yeah, thank you. Um, this is just a quick look um, at the interface itself in terms of the uh, bandwidth uh, that interface offers. So uh, on the left, you see SATA, which is pretty much maxed out at uh, 600 megabytes per second. 
um, on SATA 3 uh, using the HCI control, uh, sorry, sorry, HCI protocol. Um, and on the right, you see the PCI Express. So PCI Express Gen 4 offers 1,000 megabytes per second per lane and um, using the NVMe protocol. And uh, generation four doubles the speed per lane uh, to 2,000 megabytes per second. Uh, our current uh, King's necessities uh, make use uh, of at least four lanes. So you're theoretically on Gen uh, 3 can reach uh, up to four gigabytes per second uh, uh, transfer speeds. Um, now, looking at the um, form factors, So for SATA, we have um, 2.5 inch M SATA and M.2 2280 um, form factors available. And on the PCI Express, we offer M.2 2280 NVMe and uh, 2.5 inch U.2 NVMe um, SSDs. Uh, in our specialized design and SSD program, we also offer M.2 2242 SATA, which is a little bit smaller, um, and the M.2 2230 NVMe, which is the smallest uh, M.2 uh, module uh, we offer in our specialized designing program. Um, moving on to the next one. Uh, so now just looking at the benefits of NVMe beyond the numbers. Um, so NVMe devices utilize the PCIe bus within servers, PCs, or mobile devices, uh, which offers at least um, 25 times more bandwidth than their SATA equivalent. Uh, if we compare it to uh, traditional hard drives, which offer uh, 7200 RPM, or which is around 150 megabytes per second. Um, NVMe typically offers twice the speed through uh, low latency of 2.8 uh, microseconds versus uh, 6 microseconds of HCI. Now, expanding on the earlier question uh, from Elliot, how much faster NVMe drives are. Um, so to go into the protocol itself, so SATA uses HCI protocol. Uh, that offers one uh, command uh, uh, queue which can process around 32 um, commands at a time. So any XS commands uh, needs to be hold in CPU, which increases the CPU uh, utilization. Now, NVMe protocol was built with flash-based uh, storage in mind for accessing high-speed storage media. This now offers 64,000 command queues, and each of these uh, command queues can process, in theory, 64,000 commands which also enables the uh, direct communication with the CPU and um, low uh, CPU utilization. Passing over to Tony. Thanks, Paula, for, for the, a bit of background technical insight there. So um, really just here, we're looking at, at the timeline of Kingston's product line since we first launched our uh, our early uh, SSD product lines um, at the back end of 2008 uh, and through 2009. Um, initially, obviously, the SSDs were, were uh, there was something new in the market, and they were they faced some some resistance, uh, some concerns about reliability, endurance, and, and were they really a viable? Uh, option to use for, for storing your data? Was it going to be safe? Was it going to be secure um, and reliable and, and protect your data? Um, obviously, they proved themselves uh, fairly rapidly. And the focus then became on, OK, now we have these these flash storage devices. How can we you know, push the speed boundaries? And fairly quickly, um, over the over the next few years, we reached the point where we'd, we'd maxed out the the possible performance of, of the SATA uh, technology. So with SATA 3, you, you reach the maximum bandwidths. And obviously, that that was limiting the potential of flash storage. Uh, it's capable of much higher performance offerings. So to do that, um, the obvious change was, was going to be the, the protocol in, in terms of the interface. So switching from the SATA to PCIe interface uh, and enabling NVMe um, speeds to, to really 
uh, enable the full potential of, of flash storage was obviously something that people have put, been, been, been eager to get to get to market. And initially, obviously, there were there were price concerns. Um, you know, there was a for, in order to achieve that additional uplift in performance, there was a, a significant price premium. Um, but as we moved on, um, both on the client side and earlier, if you move on to the enterprise side, um, and and onto the ent- on the enterprise side, we've started to see increased adoption helping to to drive those those prices down, um, and meaning it's a much more viable option to to to, to offer as a storage solution. That's not to say there isn't still significant demand, and uh, the vast majority of, of of drives being sold out into the market remain at SATA. Um, both on client and and on the enterprise side, um, but that's starting to change. We're seeing increased adoption. There's a, there's uh, a wider um, potential install base out there with more more systems out there supporting NVMe, and uh, obviously with pricing coming more and more in line um, and the, the additional performance gains you get, it becomes a much more logical decision to to go down the NVMe route. So whilst we're still a, a large potential install base for SATA, and we, we continue to see uh, very strong demand there, um, over time, uh, we'll see increased range of products. Um, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, as uh, Bala touched on with the, the next generation Gen 4 products on NVMe, we'll see another jump up in performance that will be a further reason to, to consider upgrading through NVMe. Thanks, Elliot. So, sorry, Bella, you. Uh, in terms of the um, the applications um, driving this need for extra speed that I, I talked about, um, on the client side, um, we're obviously always uh, uh, encountering more applications and and more powerful applications. So the boot and loading times of those becomes uh, important and we want to make sure that you know, the, the user experience is, is, is improved by the storage that we're using. Um, another another uh, 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 another gain is obviously the space saving. As we said, as Bella touched on, we, we can get down to a, a 2230 on one of our design in products on, on NVMe. So great for small fact, form factor PCs um, and perhaps non-standard computing systems that um, that are very small form factor require uh, uh, fast performing storage. Obviously, workstations with very demanding workloads, um, <clears throat> uh, high throughput, and you can you can see um, those platforms already for some time have been supporting uh, NVMe upgrades. So, um, a great potential there. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, the the entry to NVMe um, in terms of the the barriers to entry are, are coming coming down. The the additional cost versus a SATA drive versus the benefits that you will get in terms of performance uh, are are closing all the time. So um, the fewer barriers to entry um, and uh, becomes a very much more attractive proposition. On the enterprise side. Um, Obviously, doing more with less. You're able to to have a smaller uh, infrastructure footprint, um, putting more drives into uh, uh, into a server. Um, obviously, the, the the benefits there extend beyond just increased performance, but obviously, a reduction in terms of overheads, whether that's um, space or, or power consumption, cooling, and so on, um, all all in a smaller form factor. Um, the, the expectations that customers have uh, are to be able to deliver a better user experience for their clients and customers uh, when when running applications. So they'll be able to to provide that that high level of, of reliability and performance um, through, as as we said before, doing more with less. Um, and the, the the more sophisticated applications are becoming. Uh, the more demanding they are on the storage. So with Internet of Things and big data, AI, all of these these movements within the industry are all all hungry for more performance. And uh, a switch to NVMe is is one way to contribute to that improvement. So I mentioned just now that um, obviously the the price per gigabyte um, and and the additional cost. 
um, for NVMe versus SATA, uh, that, that gap's been closing significantly. So um, in terms of price erosion over, over the last few years, since we really started selling NVMe drives in about 2017, um, how much do you think the price per gigabyte for an NVMe PCIe drive has reduced by? 27%, 37%, 47% or 57%? Yeah, thank you, Tony. It's um, yeah, some some really interesting um, uh, points there. Just while we um, we let you all um, answer this question, what do you think the um, uh, the the, uh, the level of of reduction in terms of um, pricing? But some some really interesting um, points, Tony, that that you shared in terms of the applications uh, driving uh, additional speed and and it's it does sound like um, as more and more applications do get more and more sophisticated it does um, put the put the pressure on on things that may not have been um, entirely obvious at first glance um, obviously when you talk about AI uh, big data IOT um, it's very obvious that, that obviously there's pressures on the uh, the CPU, GPU uh, memory as well, but also it's an important consideration around the um, around the the data. Um, do you think that that's gonna um, that's gonna be one of the biggest leaps when when talking about these um, uh, talking about these types of technologies? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it isn't only the, uh, the 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 demand for better performance. It's the sheer increase in volume of data as well. So um, <clears throat> with with that growth in, in data usage, data consumption and creation, obviously the, there is demand for a greater capacity of storage and, and for that, that higher capacity storage to perform in a particular way in order to deliver a satisfactory level of, of, of customer experience as well, um, whether the customer be a, a client or whether in a, in a client system or whether it's from from a server delivering uh, delivering applications to their customers. No, brilliant. Um, yeah, we're, um, I'm just going to close off this poll, and um, I've noticed we've had um, a couple of questions come through as well, which we'll uh, cover at the end. But if you do have any questions, the the box is there on the um, uh, beside the screen, so feel free to ask um, uh, as uh, as many questions as um, uh, as you wish. Um, then what I'll do is I will share the the results. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, a good spread um, uh, amongst those. Uh, Tony, do you mind revealing the um, uh, the real answer? Yes. Um, yeah, we'll go with the the majority on this one. It, it is uh, fifty seven percent. So we've we've seen uh, over those uh, the last uh, three four years, we've seen storage pricing come down significantly anyway, whether that's SATA or NVMe. But uh, NVMe has been uh, obviously particularly, it's just become much more affordable. Um, the, the, the decrease in, in NAND pricing over that period has, has certainly helped, but um, it's it's certainly more a more affordable, more accessible technology now. And that, that's always helped by increased adoption, helping to drive prices down. So um, there have become fewer and fewer obstacles um, and, and objections to, to, to making the transition to NVMe. Brilliant. Um, so let me uh, just bring us back to presentation. So um, what does this mean in the real world, uh, Bala? Uh, thanks, Elliot. Um, yeah, so in the real world, um, if we just um, um, in the actual usage, um, NVMe performance is usually noticeable in the um, client usage uh, with quick boot up times or load times of uh, uh, operating system or uh, media creation applications with large libraries, uh, large media files, or for gaming. Um, the actual, if a application makes use of, uh, sorry, let me repeat that again. So it will really depend on if the applications are already um, 
utilizing the NVMe performance. So there are few that which uh, already do, like most of the uh, media creation tools. Um, this could be video editing, music, um, or the large graphic designs. Um, and in terms of gaming, um, uh, you will see the benefits uh, largely um, with um, yeah, quick load, uh, load up times. Um, and it will depend if the game has already been optimized for NVMe usage. So the, the actual big move is happening right now uh, in terms of gaming for uh, fully utilizing NVMe performance. Uh, you see that uh, more on the uh, console side, um, uh, which if you have followed the media right now. Um, so in client usage, really the difference is greater when you're moving from traditional hard disk to um, NVMe than if you're moving from uh, already a um, SATA based uh, SSD. Um, it looks totally different on the um, enterprise side. So there are many applications that can benefit from the uh, performance offered by NVMe. Um, in particular, when we talk about real-time workload processing, like in uh, data centers or at the edge. Uh, here are a few examples uh, mentioned. Um, um, if you look at uh, online tra um, transaction processing, um, where information systems that typically facilitate or manage uh, transaction-oriented applications, uh, this could be online banking or um, online shopping. Um, um, there, the the high IOPS numbers which are offered by NVMe uh, gives you the great benefit uh, here because uh, there's a lot of more transactions that can be processed within a second. Um, if we refer back to the earlier um, IOPS numbers. Um, also CRM, which is uh, customer relationship management, so uh, software for managing all your company relationships and interactions, uh, as well as uh, customers and uh, potential customers. Um, here, of course, the same principle, uh, the high IOPS numbers uh, offer you a quicker response uh, within those applications. So both these examples are um, where the high IOPS numbers of NVMe uh, provide the benefit uh, for these type of usage. Um, the next two examples are actually more in terms of bandwidth, so content delivery network. So this is uh, your um, typical streaming platforms um, where the fast uh, and reliable streaming options are needed, where you need that high performance, maybe for uh, 4K content, for example. Um, and uh, the second one being uh, cloud, uh, where the... Um, there's also the low latency important, uh, but as well as the high bandwidth, uh, what the um, uh, NVMe offers. Um, moving on to the next one. So now, um, why are uh, organizations uh, switching to NVMe? So um, if we look at the client side, we touched on it a little bit already. Um, uh, it's really most of the current systems which are coming out have already the option and touching on Tony, the um, the price of these NVMe uh, products becoming more attractive, uh, where you can, uh, if you have the choice uh, between a SATA or NVMe uh, option, uh, the jump to the NVMe isn't that high anymore. Um, that's one reason. The other reason, um, if your existing system has the option to upgrade, then NVMe becomes a, a, a good approach to add more performance to your um, existing or legacy system, if the NVMe support exists. Um, so since 2015, um, most systems may have options to add the NVMe support to BIOS updates. Um, it's, yeah, <clears throat> sorry. And um, looking at the enterprise side, um, <coughs> it looks a bit different. Um, so there's uh, more things to consider uh, when you're switching to NVMe. So um, it will uh, depend on your existing hardware, if it has options for upgrade to NVMe. Um, it depends on your um, application performance needs. Uh, um, so if you are looking to 
uh, upgrade or you're looking to adopt uh, newer applications which require higher performance or higher IOPS numbers, uh, then uh, NVMe becomes an attractive uh, solution. Um, also, if you're looking to um, purchase new hardware or new infrastructure, then uh, you can also um, then move rather to the, uh, sorry, then you would look at a um, solution which can utilize NVMe um, storage uh, to future-proof your uh, infrastructure. Uh, the last one is really the uh, mixed model, um, which is kind of like the uh, uh, tiered um, storage approach. So, uh, so for the slower applications, you might still continue to use your uh, hard disks, uh, traditional hard disks, and then for a little bit more demanding applications, you use uh, SATA-based uh, SSDs. And then for the really high performance uh, requirements, uh, you use uh, NVMe. Or you also have the options um, to use NVMe uh, to accelerate your existing um, uh, storage array, where the NVMe becomes the uh, uh, cache for the uh, slower storage models. Uh, Thank, you so you you, Thank you so much, Thank you. Thanks. Um, so, I guess the, the question a lot of people ask is: So, what's preventing uh, an immediate move across to to NVMe? Um, obviously, with with SATA, there's um, there remains lower entry points in terms of transition to SSD. Whether that's uh, on the client side, where there are legacy systems out there, perhaps still running with a, with a hard drive, or they've already upgraded to an SSD, an earlier SSD, a SATA one. Um, but they just need uh, to, to max out the, the, the performance or increase the storage. Um, and perhaps it doesn't support NVMe yet, so they, they can still improve their performance without replacing the system and, and, and upgrading that, um, so they can maximize the use of their existing infrastructure. Um, and, and the cost per gigabyte, you know, it's, it's, it's an affordable way still to increase the, the performance and, and storage on your system. So the, SATA still has a, a very strong part to play in the business, um, um, whether that's whether that's a client or enterprise. But um, you know, so the, the purpose of of today is to really look at the benefits that NVMe brings, but also to to demonstrate that you know it, it is finding it's about finding the appropriate upgrade for for your requirements um and you know that there remains a, a strong market for sata and we expect the, the the balance to shift further in favor of nvme as uh, as this year progresses we're seeing a, a rapidly increase adoption already but um yeah we, we do don't expect to see sata going away anytime soon So, from from Kingston's perspective, um, how are we best placed to, to support customers and partners? So how can we help you? So, whether it's at SATA or an NVMe, we've got we've got a wide range of drives now from from very uh, uh, affordable entry level products uh, for the client side, um, which are, are rapidly growing in terms of adoption um, on the NVMe side, um, to to high performance data center. Uh, SSDs, and and we offer those both on the SATA and on the NVMe side. So uh, we've got a, a fully a full comprehensive uh, product suite that, that should have something to to meet everybody's needs. So whether that's client system system integration, customers, uh, data center environment, or as as Bal has mentioned earlier on on, on the session, um, the design in products that we can offer. So for for perhaps non-standard uh, computing environments or display systems point of sale or so on wherever storage is needed so we underpin all of this with our free ask an expert service so you can engage with uh, with with us here at Kingston through uh, through that service um, so Bala and, and our colleagues will, will also be uh, available to to share their expertise and advice to help find the right solution for you so what's next for us um, as, as we've talked so much about NVMe, uh, obviously there's uh, the, the, the next step is to, to, to share with you news about our, our up and coming products. So NV1, uh, we're very excited about the forthcoming launch of this. This is bringing uh, economical NVMe performance to the client systems. So 
um, we're seeing uh, a plethora of products in the market within the NVMe segment, and we feel um, it's the time to bring even more affordable NVMe performance to to the customer. So NV1 will will be launching very soon. Um, so watch this space. And then uh, on the data center side, um, we're excited to refresh our DC1000M with a DC1500M. So it's our highest performing data center drive. Uh, and yeah, more to follow on that. So both launching uh, in Q2. Uh, thank you, um, Bella and Tony. That was really interesting. Some really um, interesting points there um, and really insightful in terms of um, uh, the transition and taking a look um, where things stand in terms of uh, SATA and NVMe uh, based drives and their, and their applications. So um, we've had uh, some questions come in. So thank you all that um, uh, that pose the questions. I'm going to uh, run through as many as I can. Apologies if I don't get round to to yours. Um, we'll endeavour to um, to do so, but if not, we'll um, we'll follow up um, after the um, after the event. So um, it's a really interesting one here. Are there any new RAID type applications which are optimised for uh, NVMe performance? Um, Bala, um might be uh, one for you there. Um, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, sure. Um, so, are there any new RAID type applications which are optimized for uh, NVMe um, uh, performance, or um, have you seen any um, uh, news amongst our um, amongst our um, uh, RAID controller uh, technical uh, partners, or wider in the industry? Um, where does it sit with um, with NVMe? Oh, okay. Um, well, there are there are several options available for NVMe uh, RAID. Um, it depends really at um, the um, usage. So um, up till now, mostly uh, it's been used uh, in a kind of like a tiered storage uh, approach, or uh, in a, um, for example, for um, VMware, for example, yeah, um, or software-defined storage, uh, um, where the drive is basically just presented to the OS uh, as an individual drive, and then it becomes uh, part of a pool. Uh, now, there are other options uh, on the market as well, which uh, kind of um, uh, approach same like you've seen on SATA or SaaS, where you have a RAID controller, uh, where you have hardware rate uh, uh, options. So pretty much the same principle like you have it on a SATA where you can now uh, couple together uh, multiple drives uh, so that it uh, can be utilized as a um, entire drive. Um, but um, in addition to that, NVMe uh, um, Express, they have a new uh, feature as well. Uh, which is kind of um, um, to simplify it, which allows you to create uh, zoned namespaces, um, which basically allows you to use one drive uh, and then split it up into uh, multiple drives and um, kind of like a partitioning. But now the application which makes use of it can uh, utilize um, each. Uh, uh, partitioning on its own at the same time without uh, interfering with each other. So um, this is kind of a new feature which is coming up. Um, and that's actually, I mean, to just cover the basics, uh, there, are, there are many options out there. Uh, uh, and um, if, um, if there's a more specific uh, informa information um, um, you're after, then uh, we can uh, definitely discuss this uh, uh, off this um, offline as well, where maybe yeah. you could provide a bit more information and then uh, we can look into it, uh, uh, what options are available and uh, yeah, what options are supported by our products. Yeah, and it's, it's a really good point in terms of um, um, a little bit of uh, 
promoting our Ask an Expert, but it's exactly for those types of questions. So if you've got a configuration uh, type question or wondering um, uh, what RAID configuration or um, or anything else in terms of the system setup and you want objective advice as to um, what products are best suited based on application or um, uh, the infrastructure that you have, please feel free to um, um, to get in contact or ask an expert. Um, but thank you so much, Bala. Um, uh, really interesting uh, question there. So um, another one, um, another one. I'll pose it to uh, to Bala and um, Tony. But uh, one's coming and saying, look, we're 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 all streaming kind of Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime at the moment. Um, will these kind of um, content distribution network type servers uh, benefit from NVMe SSDs? Um, yes, I mean it. Uh, I've, I've, Thanks, I've kind of. <laughs> I've the short answer is yes, no, but uh, um, I, I don't personally know the individual uh, uh, configurations. But now, just going from what I've touched on uh, earlier. Um, the the um the approach where depending on the media uh you may have different uh um um uh, storage uh, medium what you use so for example let's say uh titles which are um kind of not that often watched or uh, or don't require the high performance might sit on traditional hard drives and then more sophisticated uh, or higher quality uh, um, medium may sit on uh, SATA SSDs. And then like uh, 4K content, for example, or even 8K, I think there's some uh, uh, in parts of the world where they have even already 8K streaming. So uh, those uh, uh, may require uh, the NVMe storage, the the high performance storage. So these these are kind of examples uh, how um, these um, services may use uh, storage in their configuration, and they may have even other uh, uh, ways of um, utilizing the technologies available. No, that's, that's thank you so much. Um, no, really good, um, really good answer there. Again, have to. Um, have to agree as as bandwidth and technologies such as um, such as 5G and and faster internet speeds warrant the uh, increase in terms of broadcast and streaming quality. Obviously, it's going to have um, again all of these effects occur downstream. That that um, yeah, bandwidth increases. Well, then the uh, the supporting technology that underpins it needs to um, increase in terms of its. Uh, of its speed. So, uh, no, thank you so much, Bala, for um, for that one. Um, uh, just going on to SATA re really quickly. Um, I had a question in f about. Okay, well, um, NVMe is great, but w how do we feel the the future of um, of SATA is um, is Kingston looking to to continue to support that? And um, Tony. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I mentioned it. I touched on it a little bit earlier. <clears throat> We've. Um, <laughs> Obviously, SATA has has been the mainstay of our SSD business for for, for since the beginning, really, and and it remains that at the moment. Um, that there's no doubt that the the vast majority of drives that we sell uh, are still SATA, and we see still a significant uh, upgrade and install base for for SATA drives uh, for the future as well. What we are saying though is that with the 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 hunger for increased data, uh, the the you know, the expectation of increased performance and 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 certain speeds and and delivery of of that data, um, NVMe is going to be playing a bigger and bigger role. Uh, we're seeing it already, uh, whether that's on on the client side, as we say, as the install base is is, is growing rapidly. Um, it, it makes sense to upgrade it with an NVMe drive. There, there are more systems shipping with NVMe. Um, uh, and, and those that are out there that can support it but still have a, a SATA SSD when the time comes to upgrade, NVMe is the obvious route. Um, but we see them both living side by side for, for some time to come. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, a really interesting um, um, point there. Um, just having a having a look through a lot of questions around our um, 
our new uh, products uh, coming out in Q2. Um, we can't really cover them individually on, on this one, but um, all I can say is um, be patient. We'll have more information in, in the coming weeks and, and we're delighted to, to, uh, to be able to share that, um, share that with you. Um, just having a look at um, uh, some other ones. Um, um, an interesting one is quite a broad one in terms of uh, lifetime of, of um, NVMe um, memory. Now, I guess that comes down to the to the chips used and and um, and actually the usage of that. Uh, Bala, is there any kind of difference? let's say in an enterprise um in an enterprise or a client drive in terms of how nvme based drives um is there any difference in terms of uh, the lifetime of of um of the ssd um mm, not really i mean it's we're using the same um specifications like we use on the sata ssds so uh, we advertise for the NVMe drives also the uh, total bytes written. So how much data you can write uh, uh, over on the drive over its uh, warranty time. Um, on enterprise drives, we offer the um, uh, disk writes per day, which is kind of the equivalent, but uh, easier to uh, uh, compare where how much data you can write uh, um, to the drive each day over its warranty time or how often you can overwrite um, the full capacity of a drive over its warranty time. So that remains the same. Uh, so uh, if you want to compare like the um, uh, the specifications in terms of the endurance, um, uh, these are still the same uh, valid. And, uh, and of course, uh, then it will also depend on your uh, workload or application. So um, we usually, uh, I mean, our workloads advertised are based on the JEDEC uh, enterprise workload. Um, however, customers may have their own workloads uh, they tested on, um, or they have a different workload. And there, our advice is usually, um, yeah, qualify, test it in your, um, um, under your workload. Uh, and then the smart data can be analyzed uh, to see what effect it has on the drive. And that actually can even give you a more accurate number for your own calculation. And uh, um, our, our tech teams are uh, usually also available to assist uh, with these type of uh, qualification. Uh, perfect, thank you. Um, thank you, Bala. Um, I'm gonna try and squeeze in a couple more uh, questions. One that's come in, um, it says what, our design, I think it means what are designing SSDs. Um, I think hopefully I've uh, captured the question. Tony, um, qu quick description of, of designing. So, so yeah, from the way Kingston approaches it, we have uh, obviously different customer segments that we, we address with our products and uh, the majority of the SSDs we sell are sold through our, our channel customers. Um, so they're, they're sold through a distribution channel and they, they end up being used uh, either they sold uh, to, to consumers, uh, e-tail, retail, for for system upgrades or, or for people doing home builds. We sell to system integration people build you know, for, to to build uh, systems for for personal or, or business use. And we obviously sell the uh, the enterprise drives for enterprise customers, data center customers, and so on to go into service. The the design in product range that we have is um, is a it, it's aimed at perhaps a, a, a new customer group for us where the it's it's for those integrating drives into a system but a system of, of a wide range of, of different uses so perhaps a non-standard pc environment whether that's um, a small form factor pc whether it's storage for cctv or point of sale devices um content delivery through uh, media and entertainment on, on aircraft, that sort of thing, storage for that. So a wide, wide range of uses. Those are just a few examples. So in those environments, um, because they're, they're not a, a standard type PC computing environment, um, their requirements in terms of the, the integrator are, are slightly different. They need to know that the, 
the, the, the build of the drive is going to remain consistent for the, for the life cycle of their products. So um, we can offer uh, additional uh, guarantees and, and, and service behind that. So uh, we, we lock the bomb so that the, the components used to build the drive and the firmware uh, all remain the same. And prior to any possible changes down the line, um, product change notifications are, are communicated um, last time purchase or purchases are made possible. So we can give some continuity of product to, to customers who are buying uh, repeatedly and need to know that there's there's that level of consistency. Um, uh, the, the product will remain exactly the same for, for the life cycle of this. So it's sold slightly differently. We, we don't sell it through our, our, our normal channel um, and it's not sold as a product from stock. These are uh, forecasted opportunities where we, we um, build to order and, and work closely uh, engaging with customers on, from a, a pre-sales technical perspective through um, Valor and our TLG team um, right the way through um, the, the life of the product um, with, with, with um, much closer engagement, I suppose. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. We had a couple of, uh, just looking through, I had a couple of um, interesting ones. Um, there last one for now and um what i'll say is is yeah any that we run out of time to uh to cover we'll um we'll come back to you um after the event um like i say we've um a lot of uh um uh in interest in terms of our, our upcoming products and um, like i say we'll um we'll come back to you in in uh in future once um uh, once we're we're ready with data sheets, pricing that that sort of thing. Um, but last one to finish up with: um, Are there any kind of minimum requirements from um, components? Um, I'm, I'm guessing throughout the, the the system to get Gen 4 NVMe um, uh, performance. So I'm guessing things like memory, CPU, GPU, that that sort of um, that sort of thing. Um, Bala. I'm not quite getting the the question. Um, so the question? No, no, no problem. Um, is there a minimum requirement from uh, the components to get Gen four performance? That's so you're thinking about about uh, uh, components other than the compatibility of the motherboard of that supporting um, the VMB. I'm guessing. I'm guessing so. It's, it's um, uh, perhaps not not clear. Let's let's. Um, Let's assume uh, not so, but motherboard is a um, is the integral, most integral part yeah. of that um, of that process. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, we've um, uh, we run out of time for uh, for questions now, but like I say, we will follow up. Um, uh, we'll follow up independently. Um, uh, a lot of great questions that we've seen coming through. Unfortunately, we we have um, run out of time, but uh, leaves me to say thank you so much, Tony and Bella. Um, really insightful, um, really good kind of top level view of of how NVMe um, has come in and has really um, play to the benefits of what SSDs can um, can offer, but also uh, also kind of looking at, at SATA and, um, and what that looks like and, and the history within Kingston that's taken. So thank you, um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining and participating. Um, really appreciate the um, uh, your input, your questions, your feedback, um, and uh, leaves me to say um, thank you, and we'll see you again on the next one. Many thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.